Jamal and Kim's Inner Circle Health Tribe, episode 47. It's time to reverse the imbalances in your life as you take the first step on your own journey towards personal change. Welcome to Jamal and Kim's Inner Circle Health Tribe, educating, empowering, and inspiring individuals to live healthier. Now here are your hosts and your guides to natural living, Jamal and Kim. Hi, Kim and Jamal here, and welcome to another episode of Jamal and Kim's Inner Circle Health Tribe Podcast. I'm Kim, and I'm joined with Jamal. Greetings, everyone. And uh, Peace and blessings. Yes, and like I said, this is episode number 47, and this is actually part two of a, of a series, or a short series, I should say, is titled Holistic Health Beyond Nutrition, and this is actually part two of that discussion. Yeah. Part one, we dived into another layer of holistic health and how to achieve optimum health and it's paying attention or being more conscious aware of the products that you put onto your bodies how that is just as important as the foods that you consume on a daily basis you want to bring awareness and attention and uh, make some changes to the things that you put on your body. So we're going to dive a little deeper into that um, because we're big on action steps. You know, you you attain a lot of information out there, but if you don't put these, you know, this powerful information knowledge into action, you know, there's really you're not going to see any benefit benefit from it. Yes. So we in this episode, we want to give you some action steps into how you can implement and change the products that you're going to be consuming or putting onto your body on a daily basis. Right. I think that this is a very important topic because we live in a society that practices like the standard uh, American way of of living. And it's unfortunate, but if you follow this the standard way, uh, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have to be mindful of how things affect our bodies internally and externally. So, um, you know, I thought it was important to, you know, bring these things up and, and to begin this level of, of conversation. Yeah, definitely. Um, but before we dive into that topic, we just wanted to briefly discuss some news that um, recently just came out not too long ago about a mixed martial artist named Kimball Slice. You know, he recently passed away due to heart failure and he was only 42 years old. And, you know, that is just just really scary to hear. It's only a year older than us. Yeah. He was so young, a phenomenal athlete. Anyone in mixed martial arts you have to be a phenomenal athlete to participate especially at that level on a professional basis and it just kind of goes to show that you have to take a holistic approach to your health because something like this you would never think a professional athlete um, would have to go through this right but um you know it's pretty scary yeah, it, it is scary on so many different levels because in our society it's it's very visual. We go by we go by a visual appearance. So in, in our society, we automatically associate uh, a person's a person's physical appearance with what's going on with their health overall. So when we see someone overweight we automatically assume that they have poor health. And when we see someone that is uh, slim, uh, we automatically assume that they have good health. And we know that, you know, as practitioners, that that uh, is the farthest thing from the truth. We have so many thin people walking around. And just because they're thin, they think that they can eat whatever they want and they're eating unhealthy and their body is toxic on the inside. Yeah. And a lot of times we look at these athletes and we look at these amazing bodies and we look at the uh, superhuman things that they can do and we automatically assume that they're healthy. Like if you look at Kimbo Slice, you know how he looked, he looked like a gladiator, you know, a straight, you know, warrior. And uh, he was a, a physical specimen. Like when you looked at him, he looked physically fit. And the things that he did uh, physically uh, was was beyond normal. So it's easy to look at a person like that and just automatically assume that they're healthy. But he mm-hmm. died from heart failure. So that that's a direct result of what he's putting in his body. And I, I think that it should serve as a wake up call for a lot of people because, you know, we're starting to see this at 
earlier uh, ages Mm -hmm. now, we're we're starting to see, you know, we have some clients that are in their early 40s, you know, 40, 41, and they have stents on their hearts now, and they're suffering from high blood pressure and high cholesterol. We didn't look deep into uh, Kimbo, his his medical history, but he could have been on medication already, you know, so to be an athlete and to still be in balance inside is is a growing challenge that we're having in this society. And, uh, you know, we just have to be, be mindful of that and just understand the power of our overall lifestyle and how everything is connected. And also in terms of sports and athletics, physical fitness is an important part of living a healthier lifestyle. But on the flip side, extreme sports puts a tremendous amount of strain and stress on your body. And when you don't replenish, repair and rebuild and have those cycles where you take it down and replenish and rebuild. And I'm not uh, aware or familiar with uh, Kimbo's, you know, I I never knew his training schedule or things like that. But it makes you kind of wonder what was he doing to repair and rebuild this body? Right. Um, Not just from the muscles, but organs and systems, you know, that's so vitally important as well to maintain that balance. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yeah, ex- extreme sports, they, they, create, they create free radicals in the body. You know, there, there's a, a term that's out there and it, it just says, your, you know, your health and physical uh, fitness and, and just, uh, you know, your athletic abilities is, uh, you know, 20% exercise, 80% nutrition. And a lot of people forget that. And that's just such an important important thing. I remember a couple years ago uh, with the last Olympics with Michael Phelps, mm-hmm. you, know, you you have this, this uh, very slim swimmer, you know, one of the greatest of all times. And they were running down uh, just because of how much, you know, mileage he puts in the pool on a daily basis, his diet in order to keep up with that. Mm-hmm. And it was like pizzas and, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers and uh, you know, fries and all of this junk food and cereals and all of this junk food that he eats in one day, ice cream. And it was just so much junk food that he was eating in one day. And it was just they were just saying that he needed this in order to get the caloric density in order to perform the way that he did. And, you know, you can only keep that up. Um, but for so long, right. you're getting energy. But, you know, what is your what are you giving your body to rebuild itself in long term wise is going to begin to uh, to break you down? Yeah, definitely. So I'm glad you brought that up because it just highlights the importance of you know, putting good things in your body in addition to exercising. Mm-hmm. All of the pieces of the puzzle, puzzle are very important. Just as it is important to watch what you eat, it's important to watch what goes on uh, in your bodies. In the last show, we spoke about how uh, what you put on your skin is actually more absorbable many times than what you're actually eating. And being that that's the case, we have to be mindful of that. And uh, one thing that that's controversial that I would like to uh, take a moment to uh, to talk about is water, because uh, we right now we live in a bottled water society where mm-hmm. we are at a point where people are more mindful now of the type of water that they're drinking and they don't trust the water that's coming out of their tap. So. They're going for alternate solutions. So a lot of people are uh, drinking filtered water. They're drinking uh, bottled water, which has its issues, but we're not getting into that today. Um, people are drinking uh, water other than what's coming out of their tap. And we just spoke about how it's more absorbable on your skin. So we protect the water that we drink, but we're not protecting the water that goes that goes on our bodies. Mm-hmm. So we drink, uh, you know, clean water and then we shower in the dirty water. Mm-hmm. You know, we shower in the water that or, or I won't say dirty water. I'll say that we shower in the water that we don't trust. Right. So we have to be mindful of that, you know, the water that we shower in because you're absorbing more of that into your skin than you are drinking. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a good time to talk about shower filters. Right. You know, if you're going to put a filter on your tap to filter the water that you drink, then it it has to be equally necessary to put a filter on your shower and and filter the the water that that your skin is drinking. Yeah, that's definitely important so um you want to start diving into some of the other things yeah let, let's let's talk about it because in the last episode we just spoke about how there's a, an accumulative effect of the chemicals that you use and that that can have a negative impact uh, on your health so 
uh, one of the things that we suggested was, you know, one thing at a time, just start switching over to more uh, natural ingredients. So uh, uh, with your products. So we just wanted to, you know, quickly go down a list so that you could be mindful of the things in your home that you should actually be looking at and looking to switch over to uh, to something natural that you might not even be thinking about because I know this is totally new. So we just wanted to make sure that this was well-rounded information so that you can actually take some action steps. Yeah, definitely. So the first uh, item that we're going to talk about uh, is toothpaste. And we know everyone uses it at least twice, sometimes more times a day to brush their teeth. And um, that's maybe, you know, a first product that could be easily changed. You know, it's like you had suggested in the previous episode, as soon as you run out of it, then you kind of replace it with a healthier option. Right. Yeah. There's just so many uh, toothpaste products on the market. And when you look at the amount of toothpaste that you're supposed to put on your toothbrush uh, it's like the size of a pea and mm-hmm. the average person puts a lot more eat they say on the label to put a pea but then when you look at the picture on the actual box it's the whole strip on on the toothbrush right. so it even misleads you on that and it even says on there it has warnings about swallowing it and, and poison control and things of that nature so i think that it's very important to switch out to uh, something that is more natural. And uh, there's a lot of controversy um, about uh, fluoride and is it really what uh, we've been taught it to be. I don't really want to dive into that today. Uh, maybe we'll come back to it. But um, but I would even suggest a, uh, a fluoride-free uh, toothpaste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next product is deodorant. Um, this is a very uh, interesting topic. Yeah, and um, controversial. <laughs> and controversial um, because, as I mentioned in ep- the first episode of the previous episode, episode number 46, and you can get that at jkhealthtribe.com forward slash 46. With sweating, your body is, you know, that's an- one way that your body helps to detoxify itself is through sweating. And it's many antiperspirants, and um, that's a very big um, marketing area that, you know, you don't sweat, but your body is meant to sweat. It's just that you don't want to be smelling. (laughs) But that also comes down to your internal hygiene. And as you continue to detoxify and cleanse, you won't have that strong odor coming out from under your arm. But you definitely want to get a deodorant that does not have aluminum in it. Um, That's one major ingredient that you want to avoid, um, an aluminum-free deodorant. And you want uh, something that is going to allow you to sweat. Yeah, along with parabens as well. Mm -hmm. Um, That's one of the things that uh, turns up a lot. And uh, yeah, the the whole antiperspirant movement of, uh, you know, preventing you from sweating is one of the most toxic things that you could do for your body. Because like Kim said, you're supposed to sweat. And uh, also you detoxify when you sweat. So it's not allowing you to do what your body is supposed to do. So in the end, that creates more harm than good. And for women, I think it's important to understand that, you know, your breasts are right there where you're putting these chemicals. So you want to be very mindful of uh, what chemicals are going near your, your breast tissue. Definitely. Yeah. The next item is lotion. In the African-American community, lotion is serious. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We will moisturize our skin. And uh, but a lot of lotions, um, they have a lot of toxic chemicals um, in them. So you want to an alternative because I don't do lotions anymore. I'll do either body butters. I'll do coconut oil. Um, and I'll put essential oils and different things in it. There's so many other ways that you can moisturize your body other than traditional lotion. Yeah, I would agree. And uh, I always, you know, kind of when I'm in the uh, department store, I'm always just looking at the different lotions. And I will honestly say that uh, 99% of the lotions that I look at are toxic. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter how, uh, you know, nice the label is and what it says, 99% of the lotions that I look at are toxic. Um, I would suggest moving away from lotions altogether right. and moving into body butters and body oils mm-hmm. uh, with minimum ingredients and just make sure that you understand what each of those ingredients are to make sure that they're not toxic. Right. It comes from like a food source. Right. Mm-hmm. The next item is hand soap. 
that is, you know, one of the major ingredients that's in traditional hand soaps is sodium lauryl sulfate, um, which is a cancer causing agent. Studies have sh- uh, proved that. Um, and a lot of hand soaps contain that uh, ingredient. Yeah. Another thing with uh, with hand soaps that I think is important to discuss is a lot of the hand soaps are antibacteria. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that it's important to understand that we've kind of been misled when it comes to that because we have good bacteria on our skin. And that's our first line of defense that protects us from, you know, just foreign invaders and things in our environment. That's our first line of defense. So when we wash our hands with this antibacterial soap, it actually destroys the good bacteria that's uh, on our hands and it weakens our immune system. And I was just reading a recent study about how long uh, you should wash your hands with antibacterial soap. And it says that you're supposed to wash your hands for 20 seconds. And then you look at the study of how long you should wash your hands to fully clean your hands with, um, if you're using regular soap and it's 20 seconds. Mm. So, <laughs> so it's not like you, you're you not getting this extra benefit. And even if you were, let's say if you only had to wash it, you know, two, two times for two seconds, I mean, it's just 20 seconds that you have to wash your hands for. So it's ridiculous. And one thing that I am starting to see now is in the bathroom, you have your regular soap. Then after you wash with your regular soap, they got the, the, hand, the, the, sanitizer. Ha- the hand sanitizer that you spray yeah. So you you double up. So you're destroying your good bacteria even more and you're weakening your immune system even more, which actually brings us to the next topic, which would be the hand Hand sanitizers. sanitizers. Right. 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 So those properties, same thing. You constantly, you know, everything you do, people carry those now. They're, They're spraying constantly throughout the day and you're destroying your good bacteria. Right. And a lot of them have alcohol that dry out your skin and mm-hmm. you're absorbing these things in it. So we want to be mindful of the hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizers, <laughs> tongue twister. Um, they have natural ones out there that you can use. They use uh, thyme oil. Right, essential oils. Yeah, essential oils, which, uh, you know, cleanses the same way. Within uh, 99.9%, uh, it, it destroys the, you know, the, the bacteria. Right. The next item we want to talk about is hair oils. Um, there's so many hair oils on the market um, it can be so confusing to know which one. And as we mentioned in episode 46, you know, about the packaging, how not to be deceived by what's on the front of the product saying all natural and this and that. You have to really look at the ingredients because a lot of these um, hair oils um, are petroleum based, clogging of the pores, very toxic. And you want to lean more towards more natural um, oils, more food-based oils to f- help nourish and feed your scalp and not clog your, your pores, your hair follicles. And also your brain is on the top of your head. So be mindful of this these chemicals seeping into your scalp and into your brain. Right. Absolutely. Look for things that are, you know, a lot of nut oil-based mm-hmm. are going to be uh, better for you coconut oils and things, things of that nature. Right. Mm -hmm. The next item is hairsprays. You know, that's another thing that you have to be mindful of if you do use hairspray on your hair. I don't know if there's any natural version of a hairspray. I don't know. Aerosol wise. um, Yes. Yeah. That's I I don't. (laughs) I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe use it sparingly. It might. (laughs) Maybe. You got to look at that one. I'm I'm not totally sure. But I know that a lot of the aerosol have, you know, effects on the environment beyond, you know, your own personal skin. So you definitely want to be mindful of that. Definitely. Um, The next item is shampoos. Um, over the years, there have been a lot more um, health conscious lines of hair products and dealing with shampoos. Um, and you want to, you know, same thing with the soaps, avoid the ones with the parabens and sodium lauryl sulfate um, and use more natural oils and more natural ingredients, um, because, again, that is going into your scalp as well. Yes. The next item and. Is makeup, and uh, Jamal touched um, a lot on in episode forty six about 
the amount of toxins that someone accumulates with it over a year. Yeah. Um, five pounds of toxins that someone can accumulate if they wear makeup on a daily basis. Um, so you want to look more towards a natural line. There's a lot more vegan lines that are out there, which um, tend to be more cleaner and safer. But if you do wear makeup, especially if you wear it on a daily basis, you want to look more towards a healthier, more natural line. Yeah, that that's interesting because they uh, posted a, uh, a story in the New York Post and they were just talking about nail salon technicians and just the amount of chemicals that they're exposed to on a regular basis. Um, you know, they use gloves, they put masks on when they're using these chemicals and they're putting these chemicals on, on your nails and on your feet and... Uh, it it was the article was saying that you know a lot of these different uh products that they use have thir- you know 1300 different chemicals uh that have been banned in Europe and the US is only uh, banned 11 of those things wow. and uh there's a lot of pressure uh for these technicians to not wear the protective gear because it's not aesthetically uh, uh pleasing. Well, it kind of looks a little crazy. I'm yeah. like, well, do I need the mask? You know, <laughs> yeah. you got that mask on, do I need it? Yeah. So so they're not wearing <laughs> these things and they're being exposed. Imagine a person that's using makeup in in um cosmetics, they how much they're absorbing in, in a year. Imagine a person that's just putting them on. Mm. So they were doing a study and they were like tracing and trying to make some connections and a lot of these technicians are um having health challenges and inf- infertility issues wow. and, and um and miscarriages that's the connection that they were making so again we're talking about like an accumulative effect so yeah you you use something one time it, it's you're fine you're good your body can detoxify but if you're using it day in day out you're not giving yourself a rest you're not detoxifying your body it can accumulate and lead to some serious uh, issues possibly wow and there are some natural lines of nail polish and nail polish removers that are out there of course you're going to have to spend a little bit more but in the long term your body's going to thank you for it right before you go into the next one also think about this one of the contraindications when you're pregnant that you're not supposed to use right. nail polish nail polish remover you're not supposed to use any mm-hmm. of those things so, so the medical industry acknowledges that your skin is absorbing these toxins, and they're and they're saying, hey, if you have a child, it's it's definitely too much if you're carrying, you know, carrying a baby or if you're breastfeeding. Right. So take heed. You respect your body. You know that's the only time that you're going to respect it and not use these things when you're pregnant. No, you don't want these toxins in your body at any time. Yeah, definitely. Um, the next item is dish detergent. There's something that's used on a daily basis and um, sodium, sodium lauryl sulfate is in that as well as some other harmful ingredients. A lot of times dyes and yeah, other dyes. things are in there. Yeah. So you want to, uh, you know, lean towards more of an eco-friendly, more natural dish detergent. Yeah, there have been some very specific dyes that have been connected to uh, to cancer. Mm-hmm. So we want to be mindful of the artificial dyes that are put in on top of everything else that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the next one is uh, laundry detergent. And, you know, that's, you know, for your clothes that are going on your skin. And we, you know, stress that time and time again that that's so important to pay more attention. So, you know, for your family, for your children, think about them as well as what uh, chemicals are going to be laying on their skin for hours upon hours of the day. Um, And you can directly change that by using a more natural laundry detergent. Yeah. And I just want to say that uh, when you start to use things that are more natural, one of the things that you notice is you don't get as much soap. But I just want to say that, um, well, I won't say soap. I'll say suds, the, the, you know, the suds that you get, you don't get as much suds. And um, suds are an illusion. Suds are not what actually cleans the, um, you know, the clothes or, or the dishes. It's the saponins uh, that um, that's used uh, in the water is what actually cleanses and separates and emulsifies um, the dirt. But in, in our mind, we've been trained that it's the suds. So when we're using these products and we don't see this uh, just sud, sudsy solution, we think that it's not working. Right. But if you use things like uh, 
uh, what do they call it? Um, soap nuts. Soap nuts. Yes, mm-hmm. soap nuts. You get zero. Uh, you get um, zero suds. And then you can use magnets, special magnets that you put in your washing machine. And you get, obviously it's a magnet. You're got, not going to get any suds. Mm-hmm. So that's not effective. And then also there's a shampoo. This is just an example. It's called, I think it's called We or, or Way. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, my mom let me use it. And it's a sudless uh, soap and I put it on my my hair and it wasn't lathering up at all and you know in your mind you're like man is this working mm-hmm. you know yeah I I even get caught got caught up in the hype for a second with my shampoo I'm like this is <laughs> is this working it's it's no soap right but uh, when I rinsed it out man my hair was squeaky clean <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just goes to show like you don't need suds you don't need right. suds at all and I was talking to a uh, a chemist. And he makes uh, natural uh, hair uh, products, or I won't say natural, but I'll say toxic-free hair products. And uh, he said that he was on the fence. He said that he has a formula where it doesn't make the suds, but he's on the fence because he knows the psychological effect it has on people. So he only keeps the suds in there for the psychological effect. So don't think that you need suds in order order for something to get clean. Right. (laughs) And the last item is household cleaners. Uh, you know, we've all grown up, uh, you know, in the past when we were younger, where you have to open up the windows when you were cleaning. Yeah. But we never once was like thinking, why do we have to do that? And, and putting on gloves. <laughs> right. Put, don't touch your skin. Yes. Um, so thank goodness there are other products on the market that are just as effective that are non-toxic that will not, you know, harm you from inhalation if you have small children, even for yourself. Yeah. Um, there are other options out there. Yeah, it says it right on there. Don't breathe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, like, says, it says don't breathe. <laughs> And how could you not breathe and don't get it on your skin? But it makes this connection that toxic means strong. Right. right. Like if you don't use that bleach, you're not going to get, you know, that stain or that germs out. You know what I mean? And that's why a lot of times people have a hard time transitioning to more uh, toxic free natural products because they just like it just doesn't work out <laughs> like this strong bleach does you know so yeah. but mm-hmm. there, there are things natural things that work just as well and think about it you don't need gloves you know i like to wear gloves just because uh, you know if you're cleaning a toilet <laughs> you, right. you wear the gloves but not because it's toxic um but if you don't have to worry about you know your, your child getting into it and possibly you know, really harming themselves. You don't have to worry about the chemicals, the 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 um the the fumes and things of that nature. You can just use something natural and know that your family is safe. And when you come in contact with these things, it's safe and it works just as well. Why wouldn't you make the switch? Right, definitely. Yeah. So those are just a few items, but I mean, it's a really great list if you address you know, all these areas um, to get you on the path to implementing, you know, converting your your daily essential products, you know, either for your personal self or for your home, um, converting them to things that are going to help you to optimize your health and yes. to live more holistically. Yes. So um, do you have anything else to add? No. We said a lot. Okay. So um, for the show notes page to this episode, I'll probably make a list of um, the items that we listed. If you want like a little cheat sheet to, uh, you know, to reference for items that you want to change in your home and in your life, just go to jkhealthtribe.com forward slash 47 and you can get um, complete access, direct access to the show notes page. Okay. So until next time, live healthier. Stay healthy, everyone. Peace and blessings. We hope you enjoyed your time with Jamal and Kim's Inner Circle Health Tribe. To keep you on your path towards a happy, healthier lifestyle, we encourage you to visit jkhealthtribe.com for content to help you find your health balance. Thanks again, and we look forward to educating, empowering, and inspiring you to live healthier.